In general, the term execution context refers to the state of a system under which your code is executing. But under most environments, the only time you're really concerned about the state of the system is, say, the security context. Are you running under an impersonation context or the context of a particular user? Because the security context can impact what your code can and cannot do. In Force.com, understanding the execution context is critical because the execution context impacts every aspect of your software development, from design all the way to testing. There are three main things to keep in mind when thinking about the execution context. First, you may recall in the previous module, I discussed how limits are built into the Apex language itself. Most of those limits are defined by execution context. In other words, if you have a set number of lines of code that can execute during a set period, the period they can execute in is the execution context. For example, 1 million lines of code per execution context. In Apex development, you have to always be aware of what kind of execution context your code is running under and what are the limits during that execution context. Next, an execution context defines the scope and lifetime of static variables. In most languages and environments, static variables, frankly, aren't very important. They are rarely used, almost a programming afterthought. But in Apex development on force.com, static variables are critical. You'll use them all the time in many different ways, something we'll go into in much more detail throughout the rest of this module. Finally, an execution context runs in a single thread. Apex does not allow you to spawn off additional threads, though it does allow you to launch asynchronous operations. Different execution contexts may run in different threads, and there is no synchronization possible between different execution contexts beyond that that's available through database record locking. An execution context begins when an external event occurs. Different kinds of external events can create different types of execution contexts, which have different limits and different capabilities. The most common events that can launch execution contexts are shown here. You have a database trigger. That's an insert, update, or delete, or undelete trigger. These can be both before and after database commits on both standard and custom objects. A future call context. This is a context that begins when you request an asynchronous operation. Scheduled Apex, where you specify code to run at specified times. Batch Apex, where you specify a class method that is called repeatedly to process very large amounts of data. Web Service. This is where you specify an entry point for a SOAP or REST web service call from an outside system. Visual Force. This is where you process requests from a Visual Force page. These can include both GET, POST, and AJAX requests. Global Apex. You can expose class methods as global to an organization. This allows other applications or other code in the organization to call your code directly. Anonymous Apex. You saw this earlier when we executed code from the developer console. An inbound mail service. This is code that executes when an email is received at a specified email address. All of these represent an event on force.com that can cause your code to start executing.